Rob here at eTrailer.com and today you're going to be taking a look at the DrawTight Class 1 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2019 Kia Soul. Now here's what our hitch is going to look like and you can see that it's going to have a really clean appearance to it, almost a factory look, and that's because most of the cross tube is going to be hidden behind the bumper and all we're really going to see is the receiver tube sticking out. Now since it's a class one hitch, it is going to give us that inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter receiver tube opening, which is going to be great if we need to free up some space inside of our sole so we can put a cargo carrier on there, or if we need to transport some bikes, we can put a bike rack in there and take our bikes to the trail. But however we're going to use our hitch, all of our accessories are going to mount to the hitch pin hole here on the side. It's going to accept a standard half inch pin and clip. Now these are not included with the hitch, but you can pick them up here at eTrailer.com along with some locking devices to make sure your accessories are secure. But if you do plan on doing some light duty towing, you're obviously going to have to have a spot to hook up your safety chains. And our connection point is going to be a loop style welded at the bottom of the receiver tube. And you can see we have plenty of room to get most size hooks on or off. However you're going to use your hitch, you want to make sure it's up for the task. So the weight ratings, our hitch is going to have a 200 pound tongue weight which is the maximum downward force of the receiver tube. It's also going to have a 2,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's how much our hitch can pull, including the trailer and everything we have loaded on it. But you do want to double check your vehicle's owner's manual because you don't want to exceed the manufacturer's recommended weight. I'd like to give you a few measurements, and these are going to help you out whenever you're looking for accessories for your new hitch, like a bike rack or a cargo carrier. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of the bumper, it's right about five inches. Now the measurement's going to come in handy when you're looking at folding accessories to make sure you have enough room and they're not going to come in contact with the rear bumper. From the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening, you are right about 11 and a half inches. Now with that height, I would definitely recommend a bike rack or a cargo carrier with a raised shank. That way we can get a little bit more ground clearance out of it. And now that we've seen our hitch looks like and gone over some of the features, let's get it installed together. To begin our installation, we want to come to the back of our sole, but we want to move over to right behind the rear tire, so we're inside the rear fender well. So right where our mud flap is at the back, we're gonna have to remove that, and we're gonna have two Phillips head screws holding it in place at the back wheel well liner. And if we move right above that, we're gonna have another Phillips screw holding the liner to the body itself. Now it's pretty tight in here, so you wanna grab either a really short Phillips screwdriver or a bit driver, and we're gonna pull those out. So with those Phillips screws removed, if we move into the inside of the liner here, we'll find a push pin fastener. Now we're gonna need to remove these as well so we can get access behind the liner. So I'm gonna take a trim panel tool, you can use a flat blade screwdriver, but you wanna pop out that center section of the push pin that'll relieve all the tension off of it, and then we can pull the rest of it out. Now there's gonna be another one if we go straight into the wheel well liner. It's gonna be right on the edge here we need to pull that one out. Now this isn't required, but it is gonna give us a little bit easier time to get behind the liner. So if you can get your hand in there, you can go ahead and pull that push pin out as well. We're gonna have one more push pin at the very bottom of our mud flap at the back of the bumper. We wanna pull that one out as well, and we can pull our mud flap down and set it aside. And we're going to repeat that entire process on the other side as well. So now we'll move back to the back of our sole and we'll find our tailpipe. If we follow it towards the front, we'll find a rubber isolator and the hanger holding everything in place. We're going to lower that down so we have a little bit more room. So I'm going to spray a little bit of spray lubricant on the isolator, just to make it a little bit easier for it to slide off. And take a pry bar and I'm going to use the muffler to pry against until I can get that rubber isolator to slide off the post. And we'll just let our exhaust come down. And I do want to mention that the axle is right here and it's going to prevent our exhaust from coming down too far so we don't have to worry about any damage. We're looking at the outside of the frame just past the wheel well liner. Here we're going to see a couple weld nuts that are in the frame. Those are going to be our mounting locations for our hitch and they're going to be on both sides. Now we make sure that our weld nuts are clean, there's no dirt, debris, or rust inside them. So I'm going to spray a little spray lubricant inside. I'll grab a nylon tube brush, and I'm going to clean out the weld nut, make sure 
then my bolts aren't going to cross thread and there's nothing inside of there. Now you want to go back and clean each one of the weld nuts on both sides. Then you want to grab one of your bolts from your kit and verify that you can easily thread it in and that they're not going to cross thread. But while we're here, I'll go over the combination of hardware we're going to use. We'll grab one of the bolts out of our kit. We're going to follow it up with a conical tooth washer. There's little teeth on there. You want to make sure those are facing towards the hitch. We'll lift our hitch up. We're going to go through our hitch and then we're going to secure our bolts into the weld nuts in the frame. Now the next set of hands, we're going to lift our hitch up. You want to make sure those tabs are on the outside of the frame. Then we're going to line up the holes in our hitch with the weld nuts in the side of the frame. And you want to make sure you get at least one bolt just hand tight so the hitch will hold itself up and then we can put the rest of the hardware in place. I'm going to come back with the 17 millimeter socket and snug up all my hardware. Now you want to make sure you come back with a torque wrench we're going to torque all of our hardware down to the specified amount in the instructions. We're going to repeat that for all of our remaining hardware. I'm going to spray a little more lubricant on my exhaust hanger and the rubber isolator and that'll just make it a little bit easier to slide it back into place. Then finally we can re-secure our mud flaps and the wheel well liners putting all the fasteners back in place. But with everything back in place that'll finish up our installation and we're ready to hit the road.